Welcome back to Project Brewpig. We're rebuilding the sunken trawler and turning it into a community expedition and research boat heading to Antarctica and around the world. We hope you'll join us. Because of COVID and travel restrictions, we've been able to do the galley install here on the hard stand, rather than when we launched, which was the plan. It slowed us down, but it's well worth it. This build isn't for the impatient or the weak-hearted. Uh, it's a lot to do. We're getting stuff crossed off the list, and right now we're doing the preliminary work, getting ready to build the plinths and get the cabinets in. We've got more blasting to do in the morning, so we're cleaning up a bit of sand. I've already trimmed up some timber. This is some thin timber that's going to be used, uh, glued to the ribs uh, inside the galley, and that allows us to have the right spacing for insulation. And we're carrying on with our plinths. We need to haul up our sandblaster as well up onto the deck, so we'll probably put it up on the foredeck and use the crane for that. We had a surprise visit from David, one of our viewers who wanted to show support for the project and offer Dame a chance to have a go in a Tesla Model 3. Dame loved it. Thanks, David. So this is my basic plinth design. I don't necessarily know how strong to make it, so I'm just going to make it all of the strength. All of it. This strip that you can see here, that is being put in because I trimmed a wee bit too much off. So now we're just adding it back in. I'd love to have a little squirty bottle for this stuff, but I don't. So I'm just using a like a paddle pop stick or a, I don't know, ice block stick, whatever you call them in your part of the world. One of these days, I probably might think about tidying that bench.
Go there. Let's get rid of you. And that's how we're going to do it with speed. <laughs> In case you're wondering why I'm using such a ridiculously short bit in this um, contraption, I bought the right size bit. I bought two of them because I thought I'll probably lose one. I lost two. I should probably do a sturdy check. Nothing snapping. Yep, I reckon that'll hold some shells. After stripping the galley out of all of our tools, sandblaster, water trap, all that sort of stuff, thinking, ah, that's awesome. It's the last time we'll need that. We forgot a bit. So, tools are going on the foredeck. We're gonna winch them up using the little crane that's on the bow. It's the anchor crane, but we're gonna be using it for our gear. Lift it up there, and then we're just gonna throw all of the cables and pipes and blasting gear in through the window, so we don't have to have too much drama inside the boat. I bet I don't have rope up here. It's annoying. It was pretty much the entire point of coming up here. I'm just going to throw this end up and then can you drop it back down from your side? Yeah, just send the hook back down this way. Building the boat is one part of this project. Another part is okay. funding. And coming closer to launch, we have to really start focusing on that. And we're so lucky. We've had one or two sponsors that are wanting to support us, who we really like. Building this boat is one part of the project, another is funding, and coming closer to launch we really have to start focusing on that. We're really lucky, Skillshare is sponsoring this episode. In the footage coming up, there's a moment when I run safely for the first time in four to five years, and we caught it on camera. And of course it would happen with me determined to get a particular shot. Thanks everyone for supporting us and supporting our sponsors. We had some amazing news, Skillshare decided to sponsor another one of our episodes and I got to do a course on a photography I've been looking forward to for ages. We have to keep learning to be able to film the stuff we're going to go and see.
I chose documentary photography. It's capturing places and people with Amy Vitelli. She's an amazing, stunning photographer and filmmaker. She explains to get beautiful shots, you have to immerse yourself in what you're documenting and take your time and other photos to come to you. It suited me, you know me, down to business, and it was. Within the first few minutes, I was ready to try a new technique. It was simple to find a course on the website, lots to choose from, easy to learn, you know, it was unpressured, but inspiring, from an expert in her field. Remember with Skillshare, the first thousand people to use the link in our description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership and after that, it's only around $10 a month. I've said it many times, I know I would change my ways, I know for sure When all the crows decide to meet they settle down beneath my feet I've got it right and I got it wrong But I learned my lesson hanging on Alright Ow I hate doing it, my ribs always fold over on this So you can just take some of the, the, all the ligaments and... Do you need to sit down? She just sort of doesn't like it. Oh, I just take some of the... Oh, I've been over the wrong way. Anywho, we're on to the sanding. And this the last part for the galley. Uh, the other rooms are done, the two front cabins are done, so the galley, so Dame's going to reach up and do the roof, so Dame's going to be, Dame just said something really rude, I'm not going to put on the <laughs> channel, but rest assured it was too rude to put on, but something Stu would very much appreciate. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Dame's going to do over here, I'm going to do the far wall yeah, and this one. this one here, yeah. we're calling this the AC wall, so I'll get around all these little... Um, pipes and everything, we'll do the best we can, get that done and then we're on to doing the vent. So we'll, we'll talk about that when we get to that. Uh, so um, we're avoiding this job. Um, we had a wonderful live feed this morning with our patrons. We're, we're close to a bit of burnout at the moment, we're pretty tired. It's been uh, surprising, this job has really taken it out of us, but I think it's the end of, end of this boat build at this stage, that we're almost in the water and um, it's just, it's been hard and it, the weather's just been real hard, it's been really humid and just, it's a really uncomfortable environment to be working in. It's just one of those days that it's just a slog. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hard, but it was lovely talking with our lovely patrons. They were great, very supportive. Uh, we're actually doing okay. We're adding an extra long breaks and um, ice, ice packs, packs when we're resting just to get our body temperature down, cold showers. Yeah. Uh, Dame's increased his workload at his job um, and that's actually meant that his job is secure. There was a risk this year with COVID that uh, they might have lost his job, which actually could halt this whole project because we're so dependent on every little bit of money we can scrape up. Um, so we're so grateful to his work for, for doing that and it's a part of the work that he works in that he's inspired by, it's solar, so it's so cool and big, big units of, mm. you have units, big systems? Big systems, yeah. Big systems of solar, um, which is so 
Oh, it's interesting. Yeah. You know, big amounts of power. So megawatt size. Yeah. So Dave's, yeah. Dave's very a happy chappy, but um, instead of an 80-hour week, it was about 110 the last couple of weeks. So we're tired. We're tired. Yeah. We're just going to get this room signed and off. It, and it happened when the boat is basically stripped into about 4,000 pieces, and no one bit is working easy. <laughs> well, that's the thing that's really tiring, actually. Is if if we had a normal bed to go crash in at night, if we had a, a normal kitchen galley that we could cook easily with, it's some um, and then you start doing takeaways and then you're, yeah. you're not eating good food and you know it's, it's tiring it's tiring yeah. but we're coming to the end of it so we've just got to slug on a little bit more on, but done. instead of just pushing 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 it's like increasing the self-care so lots of self-care lots of really positive feedback to each other because it's so easy to start becoming a bitch to each other Anywho, that's the wind done a wee bit of good news if yeah. you follow Danga Marine Stew on Danga Marine um, Adrian has been helping him with his Detroit and Adrian's actually going to come up and do some uh, final trials in the water and adjustments to the motor. He's going to work with Damien uh, just via just you know, video and, and phone uh, to get Dame to do the jobs that um, they've, they've agreed on to get the motor really working well. So There's preliminary jobs we have to do to convert the motor from a truck engine to a boat engine. Yeah, um, remember it was out of a truck. Yeah. Um, and Dame's done quite a bit of the work, but now we're at that point where we've got to get the finishing still stuff has done. still Jake breaks on, for example. <laughs> so, um, and we can't keep them. We've, we've tried everything we possibly can to... Because they think it'll be really funny. I thought that'd be awesome. Come into a marina a little bit too hot. It's like the Jack breaks. <laughs> <laughs> but... Adrian, like we did talk to Adrian about a truck horn, and he said, "Nah, you need a you need a train horn." Yeah. You're thinking, yeah, probably. So, yeah. so we've got a compressor on that'll easily run it. So <laughs> if anybody knows of a train horn, um, preferably something that's big enough to slow most recreational boats down if it was to be used. <laughs> it's a backup plan too. We're going to use it for Morse code across <laughs> oceans if the communication gear dies. <laughs> That sort of volume. As we go on, you'll see little videos and you'll see little um, follow-ups. But that's not until we've got the cabinets and the, the kitchen pretty much in. Galley, kitchen, yep. galley, Roger. kitchen, galley, kitchen. <laughs> Whatever you like. All, All right, right, we're into let's it. Let's do it. Right. Stand on. Right, we need to blast this. Well, I'm so confident that it's going to take about 30 seconds. Not even putting the full kit on. She'll be right.
Now that we've got this wall and the roof and everything, ribs, whatever, sander back, I need to go through and put some um, etch on the bare steel. I'm just going to be using a single pack etch just because it's so much easier to deal with for these little spot pieces um, and it's not a high wear area, it's going to be basically painted over and buried under insulation so it's not really an issue around that side of it. So what we'll do, I need to get this bit done first so that we can get that drying because we need to start building the actual little vent bits and pieces for, for this side. While that's drying, I'm just going to go through and touch up these other pieces on the wall. Take me five minutes and this wall will be done. Um, ready to start putting top coat on this in the morning. What do I believe? What makes me feel it? To write you this song. Need to weld this up before we get too much further on this vent. So um, you can see this black stuff around the edge. I haven't really sandblasted it because I haven't been able to get in there too easily and I didn't want to sandblast it right next to the, all that um, adhesive there to protect downstairs. I didn't want to blast through into the room below. So what we're doing, we have our one grit sander. I'm going to go back in and belt all of that surface rust off and get it back to um, as close to bare steel as we can. And then we're going to weld the flux core so that we can um, except a little bit of crap in the weld and it'll bring it all to the surface. So yeah, we'll tuck in, we'll get that done and then I've made a template. This here is the shape that I need to cut in steel and we can just fill that hole back up again. Because this um, one grit sander is so unbelievably loud, especially when you're inside a metal box like Rupee, I'm putting earplugs and earmuffs on just so that I actually have some hearing half an hour later. I think that's it. Let's get a vacuum in. Right, that is basically bashed up. So it's not absolute perfect white metal or anything like that, but you can see because there's so many dent marks and bash marks and they're sort of shiny and silver that we know that we've gone down. There's no more sort of like surface crap sitting on there that the, the uh, flux core welding won't deal with. So I do have to probably scrape some of this um, sealant away because obviously that's going to catch fire if I start welding that close. Um, and I'm pretty hesitant to do too much that's going to burn that sealant. I know that sounds funny given that I'm welding right next to it, but under this tray here is our, um, one of our cabins downstairs, and that cabin is chock-a-block full of all of the cabinetry for the, uh, for the galley, so I don't really want to set anything on fire, so I'm going to be pretty cautious when I'm welding around here. Now, this area here where there's a couple of holes you can see through, I'm actually going to um, put a pad over top of it, and then we're going to go and seal that tank up fully, um, I may end up putting nitrogen in a lot of the tanks on Brewpeg, just see, so I don't have to, if, they, if they're airtight, they're not going to rust out. Um, but yeah, we'll just sort of see how we go. We've got a piece of steel and there's nothing to hold it with, so I'm just using a magnet with a bit of string, it allows me to kind of do whatever I need to do, and then just pull it off and we're finished. Couldn't get it all the way in flush um, it was a wee bit tight in some areas. So I basically tacked the bottom so that it was flush and knew that it was sticking out. Give it a whack and we just force it in. There's just a couple of wee thin bits that are just we're just holding it, but nothing that a small adjustment stick can't deal with.
it might look a wee bit feral at the moment with uh, dags and whatnot hanging all off it flux core and so on that needs to be cleaned up but we'll go through and we'll give that a buzz now and just try and get as much of that stuff off I probably do need to come in and actually just sandblast that and give it a, a nip over so that we can prep it right um, there's some pretty ugly bulbous welds in the corner um, but there was also some pretty big gaps I had to fill up and as I started filling them up um, I realised that the the actual hull itself was still a little bit thin in those corners so I had to pad weld quite a bit of it um, hence the, the size of the welds in the actual corners themselves you can kind of see that one there, a bit of a monster and then that one over there is a bit of a hefty beast I still need to do this little piece down here so I'll talk to Jess, figure out how we want to do this there's a few challenges, we've got basically a um, on this side of the wall um, we've got the, the bathroom or the head um, I don't really want to burn all the paint off in there um, and also I don't really want to burn too much more paint off on the, the hull itself I'm not really that worried we're repainting the hull if I have to I will it's not the end of the world um, but I just want to ponder a few other ideas to seal that um, tank up so I've welded in the new steel in that panel there but I haven't done the steel the, the pinholes over that side um, and thinking about it here it's not a strength issue, right? Because they're only very small and localised on that bottom. This, we've still got this whole panel here that does all the strength with the welding and all that way. What I was thinking, blast this area out, get it back to bare steel, throw some... You're not going to say sick or anything, are you? No, definitely not. <sighs> throw some epoxy over the whole thing and then put some epoxy fairing on it. <laughs> no. You've got to use the correct tools. No. Why are you not wanting to just throw a bit of a... Because it's, head it's too thin right there to weld easily. I'm going to end up doing these huge big runs to try and get it. Um, well, if it's that thin, it's not good, is it? But it's not a strength issue because, like, see, from about, uh, the, from about there up, it's solid. It's just that one little bit. What's in the corner? Of that hole? Is that a hole in the corner? Yeah, well, they had to pad weld the shit out of it. So that's why there's a big bulbous bit there. I just filled it up. That matters because that's on the outside of the boat. Well, it's not, it's in the sponsor, but it, it's on the outside of the boat. Has Damien explained to you where this is, the other side of this bulkhead? He has not. No, well, I figured he might not have. Um, it's early morning. From, okay, so, yeah, just From explain. this side, from, from here that way, is the bathroom, or the head bathroom. Um, head? Yeah, <laughs> the, the head bathroom. The head bathroom. The, the lead bathroom. That's where you head when you need to go to the bathroom. That's true. Maybe it's what they called here. Yeah. Well, head the, to the bathroom. Yeah, or the water closet. Whoever came up with that name is awesome. Water closet. Why would you piss in a closet? <laughs> That's just wrong on like three or four levels. And everything from, from that line there that way um, is outside of the cabin, but from here down, the deck is welded about there and sort of travels all the way back. There's a tank that's basically located up in here. I, I, it's a bit of a weird location and there's not much else they could have done with it, but there is essentially just a big air void tank sitting in there. And it's got pinholes down here, so we, it will be rusting on the inside while oxygen can get in. So we just need to seal the oxygen off to stop the rust. You might remember from a really early episode, there was just like a, a raise up from the back deck to the front. It was just like that high. Yeah. Any, anyone who couldn't jump up there would be, you know, frustrated. But also the the handrail was like this, so it was right on your ankle. So yeah. I don't know how people didn't fall over the side, it was so dangerous. Yeah. And Dan put in the stairs, and that's the box that he's talking about. We yeah. built the stairs out of the I back cut, of the box. I cut into the box yeah. to make sort of so stairs. So it's now easy, and you know, we're going to raise up the handrail as well, yeah. so it's nice and safe. But, and, and I get what you're saying, you can close that up airtight. Yeah. When metal, metal gets that thin, um, it's, it just eats away. I think you need to cut out and fill it with a proper, you need to put a little pad in here. Like a little panel. So I agreed then, epoxy? <laughs> no. <laughs> Jess went through in the galley and found a couple of spots she wanted to touch up with red etch. One or two, just mainly on the roof. Uh, with a couple on the wall. And then, oh look, there's a wee bit on that bulkhead too. That may look excessive, but there's a method to the madness. If we leave any pinholes of like bare steel or any, any sort of rust or anything like that, it's just gonna basically come back and bite us later on. So we go through at this stage after you, we've just sanded it as you've just seen, um, and we'll go through now with the red etch. We make sure that we've covered up every little spot that we can find, hence why it looks a little bit OCD. We went kind of berserk on it, um, but that means that we can put the top coat on and know that we're not gonna have a problem down the road. One thing I have been looking forward to is getting rid of the bloody overhead power lines. This boat has been run on extension cords for the last six years, and as you can sort of see, some of them have even been zip tied in. 
pretty permanent sort of arrangement there. They're all coming down today. Something that doesn't need to be there. You might be wondering why the dark paint. It's all about price. We buy our paint, this kind of paint, interior paint, second hand off eBay. Uh, someone may have bought too much and they sell the excess off and we get it. It comes whatever colour it arrives in uh, because it's cheap. It's the right kind of paint, it's antibacterial, it's the one that off gases really well, doesn't continue to smell. Um, this is not the final coat, this is all going to be covered under insulation, panelling. Our final colour is going to be an off-white sort of sandy colour um, and that'll be throughout the boat. Uh, it'll contrast nicely with the wood that we'll have, the darker carpet that we'll have, um, the stainless steel that'll be through the boat. So hopefully it'll look really nice in the end. But remember, this you won't see this colour. First coat, it's a wee bit dark in here, that's a good thing. So we'll go through and we'll do another coat on that and then we're ready to start throwing in some insulation. We've also got to do rib nuts on that wall there so every rib needs to have a bunch of rib nuts put into it so that we can put the stainless panel onto that wall. But we'll also, last job, a little bit of um, rust work to fix down in that corner and a tiny bit of blasting on the welding that we did on that pad. So we'll get that bit done, clean the room out, and then start gluing the plinths in. Now you may be thinking, my god, look at the mess you're making on that lovely yellow floor. Um, but this floor is actually going to get a whole stack more paint put on it. We've been talking with our Patreons, and we decided that we just don't have enough paint on the ground. We're going to start layering it up a bit. So we'll put the plinths in, and then we'll start adding where the walking area is, a whole bunch more layers. You're just relaxing, sweetheart. Hey. Yes, you are. Yes. Oh. <laughs> Time for Some of you may remember Adrian from Dangar Stew's channel helped him rebuild his Detroit. He's helping us with our Cummins. So we need to convert our fuel pump here into a marine fuel pump. It's currently a truck setup. We need to work on our exhaust system. That's tuning the exhaust length, making sure that we've got the right turbo for the engine. And finally, we need to get rid of our jake brakes. They're awesome on a truck, but kind of garbage on a boat. Okay, now that we've got this basically painted up, ready to go, we need to start gluing these aluminum angles in. The point of these guys 
is we've roughed up one side so that the, um, the adhesive you know, bonds onto it really well. These guys sit in there like that, and the point of these is that it gives us something to bond on our aluminium panel, which comes next and seals this whole thing up and turns it into a vent. So we've got to figure out exactly where these have to go. We have to calculate our insulation size. So we've got um, 120 millimetres of insulation to take into account, but half of that 60 mil is what this has to allow for. So we'll have one layer of insulation over top of this. So a bit of measurements, and then we'll glue it in. This bulkhead's got a curve in it, so I need to take account of that by squishing the aluminium up against it. So jamming it at the top, so jamming it right at the top. We've got these 60 mil blocks in, so I've got my distance that way correct. Jamming it that way, as far as I can, and then I'm also pushing it back hard into those blocks. So, a bit of a mission, but it'll get there. It'll be done soon. That's come up really well. Right the way down, we've got a nice, smooth even transition the full length including my little jammy up mechanisms down the bottom they're holding it quite well so we'll wait till that goes hard and then we come in with a standing knife trim all of those rough edges with that sealant and then we'll be able to make that a nice um, sealed up vent these are holding themselves up they're pretty nice we know that the measurements are good so we just need to create basically a seal that goes over top of this now i haven't done the lip at the top and the bottom they're yet to happen this is how we create our vents. When you glue that in there and it's sealed top and bottom, that forms a channel that goes from the door aid vent that we put in the side of the boat right the way down into the freezer room. So we have one of these on either side of the boat at this part of the cabin, and that ventilates the two cabins downstairs. Thanks for watching. Over and out.